Okay, I don't know what happened, but the Facebook told me that my video had ended and I wasn't quite ready for it to be ended. So this is part two of our Friday Lunch and Learn, and we're talking about sleep aids. So um, if you're coming in to this one, this is the first one you're looking at, go back to the previous one that was just recorded just a few minutes ago and you'll be able to catch up. So with people doing these sleep aids, what we're looking at is a potential side effect of the uh, medications. And these are dizziness, drowsiness, nausea, myalgia, which is muscle pain, dyspepsia, which is upset stomach, back pain, hallucinations, anxiety, drugged feeling, lethargy, increased depression, and even bizarre uh, behaviors such as sleep cooking and nighttime snacking. Thank you guys for rejoining. Facebook kicked me out or the internet kicked me out, but we're back on track. So we're just continuing how we started a while ago. So it may take four to six weeks for all of these side effects to disappear after you have got, uh, been taken off your medication. And we want you to get off of your medications with doctor supervision because that's really, really important. So, uh, subjects that were on these medications, right, suffered from prolonged impairment of attention and psychomotor cognitive functioning. What is psychomotor cognitive functioning? That is your, uh, your muscles are not coordinated. You can't remember what you're supposed to do. You go to do something and you're not able to grab it. You're not, you're, your body just doesn't work the way you need to. So that's kind of an issue. So, ongoing sleep shortage contributes to a multitude of health issues such as depression, heart disease, lowered immunity, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. So, getting enough sleep is important. So, what do you do? Well, you can go to your big box store and you can get some melatonin. I don't advise that, and I'll tell you why I don't. On your neurotransmitter uh, food chain, at the very top of the food chain is your GABA, and then you've got, and I'm not sure what order this is, but you've got your GABA, your norepinephrine, your epinephrine, your dopamine, your serotonin, and at the very bottom of the food chain is your melatonin. So if you start feeding from the bottom of the food chain, you're just doing a symptom issue. If you stop at the top, start at the top of the food chain, then you're going to be uh, doing what you need to do from the top. So I use your endocannabinoid system and it is really, really good. So Facebook tells me I'm now reconnected. So hopefully you guys got all of that. Um, if you need me to repeat it, I don't know. Cause I, I don't know. I don't, my little, um, uh, Icon says I've got a good connection, so I'm not sure if Facebook's just playing with me or what it is. The third thing I wanted to talk about was the ketogenic diet. Now, there are a lot of people who say the ketogenic diet is bad. There are some people who say that the ketogenic diet is good. And this is a short report about the ketogenic diet and how it alters the microbiome in the gut. So, we all know that we have belly bugs in the gut. We all know that. And so, changing what we eat changes the function of the bacteria in the gut, and we want to have the really, really good bacteria. So, this particular study was a recent study done by UCLA scientists, and it's published in the journal Cell, C-E-L-L. -L. And it pinpointed a causal leak between seizure susceptibility and gut bacteria. And just in short, what this lesson or this report shows is that a ketogenic diet actually starves the bad bug, bug bacteria in the gut to make and it's that gut bacteria metabolic processes that cause the seizure. So let me just break that down. When you've got bad bacteria in the gut, it has metabolic processes. Those organisms breathe, they vomit, they poop, they do all that kind of stuff in your gut. Those kind of uh, waste products, metabolites, uh, metabolic output, right? Those kind of things 
interfere with what's going on in the body and it causes you to be more susceptible with seizures. Now what we found in this study is that the ketogenic diet kills those microbes which makes you less susceptible to that bacteria. So that's kind of a good thing. Now, do I like a ketogenic forever and ever, amen? No, not really. Um, I'm okay with you doing it for three or four months and then going to paleo, doing that for three or four months, then going to something else. We don't want the SAD, the SAD, Standard American Diet. We don't want that. We want other things. But this, these gut micro organisms in the body mess up your biological terrain. When your biological terrain is messed up, not only are you more prone to seizures, but you could be prone to other things as well, and your whole health just deteriorates when your gut bacteria is messed up. So, those are my three pearls of wisdom today, and I'm just about out of time. I know you're going to have to watch both of the videos, I don't know why I got timed out because I haven't moved, the signal hasn't moved, maybe we've got some rain or something in the forecast, but I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate you coming and joining me on this journey. If you have any questions, populate them in the box and I will answer. And thanks again for sticking with me and watching both videos. Have a great weekend and I will speak to you soon. Take care.